tech marketer turned psychotherapist, Galen Burke, is going to tell you about the power and importance of the stories we tell ourselves, each other, and the world. Galen Burke. So as a former tech marketer turned therapist, I've seen firsthand in both professions the power of the stories we tell ourselves and each other. In fact, a well-told story can change the world. I'm going to get into how and why, but first, uh, let's go through a few examples of the great stories that have touched us all. Many people do not realize this, but Don't Mess With Texas was a public service campaign. <laughs> Kicked Smokey the Bear's tail. They could not get people in Texas to stop polluting and littering. They were fining them thousands of dollars. Nothing changed. And they said, well, what if we tap into the pride of the Texan with Don't Mess With Texas? Overnight, littering plummeted. One of our best storytellers, JFK, in 1962 said, we choose to go to the moon, a challenge we are unwilling to postpone and intend to win. He made us feel integral in winning the space race. And in a time frame that seemed absurd, we did. Stanford business professor Chip Heath analyzed these anecdotes and thousands more looking for common factors behind our greatest social movements. Beneath all of them, he found a simple, unexpected, concrete, credible, and emotional story. Brain science can now tell us why stories impact us so deeply. In fact, the stories we tell ourselves don't just reflect us, they shape us. The stories we tell each other don't just reflect our relationships, but they drive them. And the stories society tells us don't just reflect it, they create it. If we take a look under the hood, this is why. Our brains, they have a 500 million year old defense system that we borrowed from reptiles, a 200 million year old social system we share with mammals, and a 2 million year old executive, executive functioning system, which is a defining characteristic of primates. This, the neocortex, is very advanced, but make no mistake, we are just fancy primates. About 100,000 years ago, some random mutations in this neocortex made us capable of creative thinking, which dramatically enhanced our ability to collaborate and innovate. Two superpowers which, for better or worse, have made us the apex species we are today. Before creativity, we collaborated with kin, those who fed us, protected us, groomed us, not so scalable. After creativity, we could organize by the thousands based on shared values and beliefs. The American story envelops millions, the global economy, billions. Before creativity, human innovation enhanced what we could already do. With creativity, we began to dream of the impossible. In 1903, a bird enthusiast and his bike mechanic brother took flight. Today, planes break the sound barrier and spaceships defy gravity. But there's a problem. Nature launches stuff with a bunch of bugs, which it patches over time, and a lot of time. So, these mutations that launch creativity and change the world, the code's not so stable. When we become too stressed, our capacity to collaborate and innovate crashes. As psychologists Yerkes and Dotson observed, anxiety enhances performance, but only to a point. When anxiety gets too high, the latest features launched by our neocortex go offline, leaving us reactive, overwhelmed, vigilant, and defensive. When creative collaboration goes offline, so does innovation. We move backward politically, scientifically, and socially. With temperatures and inequality rising, we're also seeing a rise in hatred, individualism, isolationism, both in the US and worldwide. When I worked in tech, this was one of my favorite posters. As a therapist, I have one small edit. There is no way to eliminate fear. That reptile is in there. Instead, we must muster the courage to face it. Knowing this, what would you do if you had the courage to change yourself your relationships, and the community that you live in. Half of Americans will suffer from a mental disorder in their lifetime. Depression is the leading cause of disability worldwide. 
Wealth inequality in the U.S. has reached levels of the Gilded Age. Three men own 50% of the wealth in this country. Globally, we have 12 years to minimize the most catastrophic effects of climate change. If we want to change the course of history, we have to change the story. What threatens us today is global. That means we are all in this together. And if we are all in this together, we all matter unconditionally. That means you matter unconditionally, and I matter unconditionally. So start by asking yourself, what needs to change for this story to be true for you? What parts of, your, of you elicit fear, disgust, guilt, and shame? How can you approach those parts with self-compassion instead of self-hatred and judgment? What has to happen for you to turn to your partner, your colleague, your neighbor, and your friend and say you matter unconditionally? Building strong bonds can be scary and time-consuming, but it is well worth the effort. Strong relationships are the greatest causal predictor of longevity. Finally, we must examine the stories that fuel the systems in which we live, like this one. It is not from the benevolence of the butcher, the brewer, or the baker that we expect our dinner, but from their own self-interest. First of all, someone hug that guy. Second of all, <laughs> confident as he sounds, as we've learned today, he's wrong. As Ben Parker explained to Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. While we all need to ask ourselves what we can do to make these stories true, the more power you have, the more responsibility you have to change the top-down stories that run our society, like how companies are structured and how policy is made. So in closing, I challenge you to reflect on these questions. What would you tell yourself if you had the courage? What would you tell other people if you had the courage? And what would you tell our society if you had the courage? Therapist pro tip, start with compassion and you will find the right path. Thank you. Galen Burke, everybody. Yeah, that is so true. The compassion part is amazing. Acting locally means starting within yourself, not just near you. It's inside. So I just love that. So great. Thank you.